Hi, GMC. So I've been inspired by our recent discussions about the rec board and uh, you know the grading and what makes a lesson difficult. Um, and I thought I was going to dive a little bit into the topic of playing with feeling. Now, what is that? You know, if you've had someone tell you you should play with more feeling and you were confused, well, I can tell you you're not alone. It's a kind of worthless advice to give, you know, in an instructional context. Um, because, you know, there is some truth to it. Uh, but if you just can't play with feeling, uh, then you sort of have to take a step back and try to break down what actually makes up for uh, you know playing with versus without feeling and that's what we're just gonna we're just gonna look at an example today so if we have like a scalar line and that ends with a bend i'm in the key of e minor uh, there are various ways we can play this and make it sound totally different with the same notes the obvious way would be to just play a, a very different rhythm but we're going to stay away from from that because we want to look at you know how we can just slightly alter the way we pick the notes and stuff like that and make it sound very different so obviously i could pick every note i could start with a like a rake oops and that would make it sound very different right then i could uh, do it legato and that would give it a very different feel. Right? Still saying the same note, pretty much the same timing. It's just uh, how we pick the notes. And also, you noticed that when I started the whole thing with a, like an aggressive technique, like a rake, that really adds to the, you know, if you compare this, there's a very big difference there, right? And the only thing I'm doing is I'm adding a rake. Uh, you know, if you want these techniques explained, uh, you could obviously head towards the lesson archive or just, you know, ask me specifically in another topic. That's not what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to try to give you examples of uh, the tiny stuff that makes uh, the whole difference. Now, in the same way, we could use a slide to reach the first note. Right? We could do a downward slide. That makes a kind of diff big difference. Uh, we could try to play more staccato. So in other words, we could kill the notes once we play them. Right? Like that. Makes a big difference. Now, if we do a little bit of that and a little bit of the normal way, uh, we do... Then we start getting something where we... It's not quite as easy to tell what I'm doing, right? Just looks like I'm playing those notes and I'm bending that ending note. Uh, whereas, in fact, you know that I started out with a bit of staccato. And then I transitioned into more normal picking, or whether I do it with a finger or with a pick. Uh, and this is sort of the interesting part. The more we get these kind of subtle tools that are used sparsely... Uh, the harder it is to sort of define what is happening, but it is still happening, even though it's hard to tell exactly what is happening. So this is pretty much our job, both as students and instructors, to get into this and, and to see what, what is happening there. Uh, we're playing the same notes, but it sounds different. And once you start doing that, uh, I think you start paying more and more attention to the small stuff, and eventually, you're going to be using these tiny uh, details the same way you would, you know, trying to figure out whether you're going to do uh, like a hammer-on or picking, which is something most people are um, more comfortable analyzing because it's so obvious whether you are picking with the right hand or whether you are just doing hammer-ons, right? It's very easy to tell the difference, yet the difference in sound is not always extreme, but because the technique is so obvious, this is something that tends to be easy to analyze. Uh, but there are heaps of other things, uh, like the ones I show you, that make up for a big difference in sound, especially when you start combining several of them. Um, and, and these have the same impact, but they're harder to define. So that's what you sort of have to get into in order to break down and analyze feely playing. <laughs> I'm using the word feely here. I hope you understand what I mean. 
Uh, but it would be interesting to hear your take on this and maybe, uh, you know, let us know if, if there are uh, like specific techniques that you find are really subtle but that have changed uh, your playing to the better, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to throw this out there on the GMC forum and we'll see what happens. There's his thumb. <laughs> see you there. Cheers.